Recently, I've been playing John Schaefer's At The Gates, and thought it would be a good game to review on the channel. Indie games can sometimes struggle to get the word out, and I haven't seen much fanfare for the game. You may recognize the name John Schaefer from his work on Civilization V, the flagship 4X game from Firaxis, where he was the lead designer. If you do, it should come at no surprise that At The Gates follows in those footsteps, but is a brand new and interesting take on the 4X genre. It blends survival and roguelike elements with more typical turn-based strategy fare for a really unique experience. I've played quite a few strategy games, but none that feel quite like this one. When you first start up At The Gates, you're greeted with a simple main menu that consists only of a new game button, a load game button, and the options menu. When you press new game, you get your choice between an assortment of different starting tribes, but you only start with one of them unlocked. To unlock new tribes, you have to encounter those tribes while playing, and either make an alliance with them or sack their capital. The way you unlock tribes is a good way to encourage replay value and gives you a persistent progression between games. There aren't any difficulty settings, map generation options, or other starting options that you might come to expect from the 4X genre. The only choice that you have is your starting tribe. This means that if you find the game too challenging or not challenging enough, you'll have to settle for whatever the game throws at you by default. I spoke briefly with John Schaefer himself about this, however, and he said that these features might be added post-launch. At the Gates takes place after the split of the Roman Empire as their power is crumbling, and your goal is to become the next world power. There's no multiplayer in this game, so you're going to be battling it out with other AI tribes, but one thing that sets it apart from other games is that you don't directly compete for victory with these other tribes. They aren't trying to satisfy the victory conditions the way that you are, but they still have the potential to be close allies or bitter enemies to your kingdom. In order to win, you'll need to topple the Roman Empire's remnants either by sacking one of its two capitals, or by sending enough clans as infiltrators to take it over from the inside. Getting into gameplay, what really sets At The Gates apart from other games straight from the beginning is the clan system. In other 4X titles like Civ, you usually have the choice between building units, which are things like workers, armies, ships, or planes, or constructing buildings, which are stationary objects that increase the capabilities of the city that you build them in. In At The Gates, these two things are one and the same in the form of clans. Each clan represents a portion of your empire and has the potential to either be a unit that moves around the map, or a stationary one that buffs an aspect of your settlement, like a building from other games. Each clan has a discipline and a profession. A profession determines how that clan functions, and each profession is associated with one discipline. Disciplines are basically categories of professions. Clans train fastest when assigning them a profession within their discipline, and unlike other games, any clan can be trained and retrained into different units any number of times. The game actively encourages you to switch things up based on what you need at any moment. Though it always pays to train a clan in a profession matching its current discipline if possible, like turning hunters, which gather meat from animal tiles, into archers, which can fight bandits or other military units. Hunters and archers are both under the honor discipline, so it only takes a small amount of time to switch professions compared to, say, turning a farmer into a spearman. You also have the knowledge tree, which is the research equivalent for At The Gates. As you progress through the tree, the only things to unlock are new professions. Each profession also has a number of upgrades to increase their efficiency. And these professions are one of the key ways that At The Gates sets itself apart from other games in the genre. Some professions like explorers, spearmen, or gatherers turn your clans into free-moving units that can navigate the map in order to perform certain tasks. Others, like farmers, miners, or ranchers, make it so that the clan becomes a unit that can navigate to a specific resource, and then set up a semi-permanent or permanent building on that tile to exploit it for larger rewards. These structures can be abandoned later if need be, and the clan can be moved either back home to the settlement to retrain, or to another tile. And then there are settled professions, which function like buildings from other 4X games. For example, having a breadmaker in your settlement makes it so all of your wheat farmers provide more food, and having a lore keeper increases how much knowledge you generate per turn. But clans are also a factor in and of themselves. Most clans have a mix of positive and negative traits that can change how you might want to use them. For instance, one clan might excel at metalworking but have a hard time with agriculture. Some professions, like bards, are flagged as social professions, and some clans might be better at that type of work than they are at blue-collar labor. Clans can also have desires which affect their mood and subsequently their efficiency. An example of this is that I trained one of my clans in agriculture only for them to develop a desire to have a discovery-based profession a few turns later, and they became less content and less efficient until I granted that desire and turned the clan into an explorer unit. 
Clans who occupy the same tile or are settled together also sometimes feud with one another. When a feud breaks out, the mood of both clans is reduced until a desire is fulfilled. The only desire that I've seen from feuds is for the player to choose one of the two clans to punish, permanently damaging its mood and completely resetting its discipline progress and profession, meaning that you have to retrain the clan. Another key wrinkle is that unlike other games where you have multiple cities, you only have one settlement in At The Gates. During the beginning of the game, it's a mobile camp that you can pick up and move when need be, and any buildings that you construct on tiles within the borders of that settlement will persist even after you've moved, unless you abandon the buildings. What's more is that these buildings have borders of their own, so moving your settlement allows you to extend the reach of your influence. And you'll have to move your settlement because At The Gates plays heavy into survival elements. Since maps are randomly generated, the resources that you'll have each game will vary, but you'll need to exploit everything that you can in order to survive. As you grow and gain more clans, you'll have more mouths to feed, and that means that you'll keep finding new sources of food. There are animals like cows and deer, and natural resources like wheat, grapes, or beehives. These resources eventually dwindle, meaning that once you've exhausted your food supply from an area, you'll have to pack up your settlement and move on to greener pastures. But it's not always so simple. At the Gates also has a seasonal system. Every turn represents half a month, and once you get to winter, many natural resources stop providing. If your only food supply is wheat, for instance, you may find yourself in trouble come winter if you haven't been able to build up a surplus. But animals can be hunted for their meat all year round, giving you a means to survive. There's also a caravan that arrives every few turns, allowing you to trade what resources you have for anything that they're carrying that day, which might be the difference between starvation and a full belly. The caravan also functions as a way for you to get the things that you need, even if you don't have a supply of it nearby. And you should be prepared to lose your first few games. The world of At The Gates can be unforgiving, and it only takes a few mistakes to lead to a snowball effect that can leave your clan starving. But as you play more and more, your skills improve, and you'll make it further each time until you can finally win the game. And, uh, I'll let you know when I finally manage it myself. After you've spent some time exploring the map, and have finally found the perfect spot that you want to settle down for good, you can turn your settlement into a kingdom. Changing to a kingdom permanently roots your settlement in place, but brings with it several advantages like increasing your borders to giving you the option to permanently exploit resources without depleting them. From then on out, you can increase your borders with the construction of new buildings like watchtowers, but you have to be careful not to overreach to the point where you can't effectively defend those borders. Combat is really straightforward. Armies have both a health meter and a morale meter. Attackers sacrifice more health than morale, and defenders are the other way around. The goal with combat is to drive the enemy from the tile by reducing their morale to zero, and then you can finish them off if you choose. I haven't been able to attack a city yet, so I can't comment on that too much, but besides the morale system, it's a pretty standard 4x combat, so it shouldn't be too confusing. At the Gates is such a different experience that its mechanics can seem odd and overwhelming at first, especially because the game hits you with them all at once. Fortunately, it has an extremely intuitive learning tool in the form of nested tooltips. You can hover over pretty much anything in the game for more info on that object, containing everything from the cost of the item, to what it produces, to how it interacts with other parts of the game. Within those tooltips, lots of words will be highlighted, and if you want to know more, you can just hover over them, and it opens up the next tooltip. I love this feature. It's kind of like a built-in wiki site that makes it super easy to figure out what's what, and I would love to see something like this integrated into other strategy games. But if that's not enough for you, there's also an enormous help menu that's sectioned off so you can selectively pick any given concept and learn more. A step-by-step -step tutorial is also planned, but may or may not be present in the initial release of the game. The help section and the nested tooltips are great, but a tutorial would go a long way toward making the game more accessible to newcomers. If I had to criticize any one part of this game, it would be the UI. Some things feel poorly thought out, like a white movement indicator that's almost invisible when winter rolls around and there's snow on the map. There's also some times when your clan can't move or act that turn, maybe because of weather or terrain conditions, and the UI does not always make the reason clear. On top of that, I couldn't find a complete list of your clans anywhere, which made choosing what to train next a little bit annoying, as I had to keep stock of what I already had and what I was short on without having a master list to go by. I also still have no idea how to look at the knowledge I'm generating per turn, but I think I must be missing something obvious. Beyond the UI, even with the tooltip system and the help menu, the experience can be a little unintuitive. That step-by-step -step tutorial that's in the works will probably eliminate this problem, though. Now, a AAA game, this is not. 
If you're expecting high fidelity graphics or amazing production values, you should adjust those expectations. The art is decent for what it is, but it'll probably give a lot of people a sort of mobile game vibe. The portraits for the different clans and other leaders have a really nice watercolor aesthetic, but it doesn't translate so much into the game map itself, which is a little disappointing. Another thing that really irritates me is that the game makes a save file for every single turn, and these save files do not take up a small amount of space. I was only about 100 saves in when I took this footage, and I was approaching 300 megabytes of save files. There's an option to delete old saves or any saves beyond 50, but this many saves is overkill and it seems really sloppy to me. A rotating autosave like Civ, or at least an option for it, would be just fine. I don't want to give this game a numerical score because I feel that it might be reductive, but would I recommend John Schaefer's At The Gates? Absolutely. My bottom line is this, it's a really unique game that's different from pretty much every other strategy game that I've played. A lot of the new mechanics, while interesting, can be overwhelming, but the game does its best to give you the tools to understand them. If you like games like Civilization but also want a completely new experience, At The Gates is probably the game for you. If you're looking for a more traditional Civ-like or Paint The Map game, it's probably not. If you're somewhere in between, I hope the information in this review can help you to make an educated guess. For me personally, I'm having a pretty hard time with the game, and maybe it's just because I suck, but I think it's more that the game wants you to try again and again, improving your skill each time you play. It's really hard to give a score with my runs ending in failure so far, so I think going the informational route is more appropriate here. I would say that it's definitely a game worth checking out, if only to see for yourself if it's up your alley. Since it's so different, it's hard to guess how people will get along with it, but let me be clear. It is by no means a bad game. Even if the execution does stumble in places, it's a game of really good ideas and I will always applaud a developer for trying new and interesting ideas over trotting the same roads again and again and again. And At The Gates is that game. I hope you've enjoyed the review. I also want to give a shout out to the man John Schaefer himself, who was kind enough to hook me up with a code for review. I always appreciate folks who are willing to work with a smaller channel. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and hit that sweet, sweet thumbs up button. I always appreciate when you guys share my videos, so thank you all for that as well. Now excuse me while I go try to suck a little bit less at this game. Until next time.